In this module, we'll start discussing the various types of connectors in a computer, starting with the internal ones and finishing with the external connectors, which we normally call ports. Connectors or ports are used by a motherboard to interface and interconnect electronics, both inside and outside the computer. To break it down, we will divide them into two categories, internal connectors and external connectors. Internal connectors. Those connectors interconnect motherboard components and are used to solely connect devices inside the system unit. They are always included in the basic product specification. Let's start with the first and probably the most important one, the power connector, or the ATX connector. This connector provides power from the power supply to the mainboard and distributes the voltage between components based on their needs. Next we have the audio header, which is responsible for the functions of audio input-output ports, such as headphones and microphone, on the front panel. The next one is the USB header. This one is responsible for the functions of the USB ports on the front panel. The fan header, or the sysfan, controls the system fan speed and provides them with voltage. RGB header. This one controls the RGB LEDs and is fairly common in new high-end motherboard models. Expansion slots, or expansion connectors, are used for adding new cards that were not included in the basic product specification, such as memory cards, network adapters, graphics cards, etc. PCIe connectors are the most common and reliable connectors for this purpose. Hard drive connector is used to connect internal storage devices to the motherboard. SATA is by far the most common type of connector for personal storage these days. SATA connectors. SATA, which stands for Serial Advanced Technology Attachment, is the modern industry standard for connecting HDDs or hard disk drives and SSDs, solid state drives, to the motherboard. SATA will be discussed in more details in a separate chapter under the Storage Devices module. IDE Connectors IDE stands for Integrated Drive Electronics and is also known as ATA or PATA. IDE connectors will also be discussed in a later module. Let's talk about power connectors. Each component on the motherboard requires a specific type of voltage. As previously introduced, power connectors provide electricity from the power supply directly to the motherboard or to separate components. The following are examples of different types of power connectors you might encounter, including legacy connectors which are no longer in use. This one is the original PC main power cable. This is a legacy connector that was used in the 80s in old PCs to connect the power supply to the motherboard. Next we have the floppy drive power cable which is also a legacy connector that was used in the past to connect floppy drives to the motherboard. SATA power cable. This one is used to connect SATA hard drives to the motherboard. ATX power connectors. This one is used to connect the power supply to the motherboard in modern PCs, as we saw before. 8-pin PCIe power cable. This one provides extra power to the PCIe expansion cards. 6 plus 2 pin PCIe power cables. These ones are used to add more power to certain types of video adapters. Next, let's talk about computer's external connectors or ports. These are the ones you can actually see externally on the back and front sides of a computer without having to open it. External ports. These ports might seem a bit more familiar to you as you'd be using them on a daily basis whether you're an IT technician or just a regular home user. A port is a docking point in which an external or peripheral device can be plugged in order to connect to the PC. The rear panel ports are slots on the motherboard into which a cable of an external device will be plugged. Examples of external devices that can be plugged into the PC via ports are smartphones, tablets, network devices, other computers, printers, keyboards, mice, monitors, sound cards, loudspeakers, headphones, piano keyboards, microphones, webcams, SD card readers, CD and DVD readers, external disk drives, and USB flash drives. To make it clear, ports are the first layer, or the physical layer, allowing the computer to communicate with other devices. 
reports used to be categorized into two categories, which represented two different methods for data transfer from one point to another. Let's talk a bit about the difference between serial ports and parallel ports. Serial ports are typically built into the motherboard and have 9 or 25 pins. Personal computers normally have 1 to 4 serial ports, as shown in the illustration on the right. Serial ports transmit data bit after bit using a single channel, or wire, although Ethernet, USB and Firewire do send serial streams of data. The term serial ports applies mainly to hardware that is compliant to the RS-232 standard. In serial ports, data travels at a speed of 115 kilobytes per second. On the other hand, parallel ports can transmit data simultaneously on more than one channel. On personal computers, the parallel ports can be used to transmit 8 bits or 1 byte of information via 8 separate channels. There are many types of parallel ports, but the term has become most closely associated with a printer port or the Centronics port. Those ports have been superseded by the USB standard. Let's review the key differences between serial and parallel ports. The first one is the pin configuration. Serial ports use 9 or 25 pin male connectors. Parallel ports use 25 pin female connectors. The second main difference is the port types. Common types of serial ports would be COM1, COM2, DE9 and D-subminiature. Common types of parallel ports would be LPT1, LPT2, DB25, 36 pin, DC37 and Centronics. The third main difference is the typical usage for these ports. The serial ports are used for flat screens, GPS receivers, barcode scanners, satellite phones and modems. The parallel ports are used for printers, scanners, joysticks, external hard drives and webcams. So what types of ports are available on a standard computer nowadays? In this part of the module, we'll review them all and explain which functions they serve. The first to start with is of course the USB port, which is probably known to most of you from simple daily tasks and popular devices. USB stands for Universal Serial Bus. It's a universal and multi-purpose standard, which is used for connecting all sorts of external devices, such as smartphones, printers, headphones, mice, keyboards, flash drives, and much more. USB can be used for charging devices as well, and it comes in different varieties. The first one is the type A, as you can see on the right. This is the most standard type of USB. The next type is type B, or the square connector, which is used for printers and some external USB drives, but no longer common. Next we have the mini USB, which is a standard for mobile devices, it was in use before micro USB was released, but is still available today on some smartphones. Next, we have the micro USB, which is still a common standard for mobile and portable devices. Next, we have USB Type C, which is the most recent standard for new laptops and smartphones. It supports high speed transfer and charging. The three main iterations of USB speeds are 1, 2, and 3. On the right, you can see the supported transfer rate for each one of those versions. So we can see that USB 1 supports 1.5 megabit per second, which equals to less than 200 kilobytes per second. The next generation of USB is 1.1, which supports 12 megabit per second, which is equal to 1.5 megabyte per second. USB 2 supports 480 megabit per second, which equals to 60 megabytes per second. And finally, USB 3 and USB 3.1 support 5 to 10 gigabit per second, which equals to 625 megabytes per second and 1.2 gigabytes per second. Moving on with external ports, we have the PS2 port, which is used for old keyboard and mice. Some of you might remember it. Next, we have the VGA or Video Graphics Array port. They have 15 holes connectors and used for connecting the monitor to graphics cards. VGA connectors and cables carry analog component RGBHV video signals and VESA display data channel. Next we have DVI or Digital Visual Interface Ports. This is a popular digital video standard for connecting flat panel LCD monitors. To support higher resolution display devices, DVI specs contain a provision for dual link 
Dual Link DVI doubles the number of TMDS pairs, effectively doubling the video bandwidth. As a result, higher resolutions up to 2560 on 1600 are supported at 60 Hz. Next port is the DP, or the Display Port. It was initially designed to replace VGA and DVI, and was standardized by the Video Electronic Standards Association, or VESA. The interface is backward compatible with other interfaces, such as HDMI and DVI. Next we have the Mini Display Port, which is a miniaturized version of the Display Port. It can display devices with resolutions of up to 2560 on 1600 and 4K. Next we have of course the HDMI, which stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface. This is a high definition video standard, which is capable of transmitting high quality and high bandwidth streams of audio and video between devices. It was developed by multiple companies including Hitachi, Toshiba, Sony and Philips. Next we have the power socket, which is a three-pronged plug that connects the computer's power supply to the power source. Next we have the Firewire ports, which are 4-pin, 6-pin or 9-pin connectors used for high-speed transfers for large amounts of data, somewhere between 400 and 800 megabit per second, and it is mainly used for connecting camcorders and other AV equipment to the PC. Firewire was developed by Apple. Next type of port is the Game or MIDI port. This is a traditional connector for joystick input and occasionally MIDI-compatible musical devices. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface and was replaced by USB long ago. Next one is the Ethernet port, which is also called the LAN port or the Network port. Ethernet ports are used for network connections and they're also known as LAN or Network ports. They can be connected to routers, switches, nearby computers or other network devices and use the RJ45 connectors for this purpose. The Ethernet protocol supports the speed of 10 megabit per second, which is now obsolete, 100 megabit per second, 1000 megabit per second, which is also 1 gigabit per second and known as gigabit Ethernet, and 10 gigabit per second, which is also known as a 10 gigabit Ethernet. The Ethernet port resides on the network adapter. This port will be used both for the private and home network and for internet access, although these days most home computers use Wi-Fi, while Ethernet is used as an alternative uninterrupted connection method to the network. Ethernet served as the basis for the IEEE 802.3 standard and deals with low-level layers. These layers would be discussed in a separate course which will be dedicated for networking fundamentals. Next we have the audio sockets. These ports connect external devices such as microphones, headphones and speakers to the generic sound card on the motherboard and serves as an analog audio connector. The pink one serves for the microphone input. The blue one serves for the line input. The green one is used for the front speaker's output, and the black one is for the rear speaker's output. The orange one is casually used for subwoofer's output, and the gray one is the middle speaker's output. Next, let's talk about eSATA. The eSATA port is an individual external connector for SATA hard drives. Before eSATA was introduced, external hard drives were connected via USB 2 or FireWire. eSATA can provide faster transfer rate than USB or FireWire, but requires its own power connector for this matter. Next we have the D-Sub port or the D-Sub miniature port. This is an old method for connecting external devices, but still exists on some computer models and has gradually been replaced by USB and Thunderbolt ports. Next we have the parallel ports, which we already discussed about, which is an old type of port used for connecting peripheral devices. It is also known as the printer port or Centronic port and has commonly been used for connecting printers and scanners to the computer. For a high-definition overview of different types of ports and connectors, please see the link in the description.